Greetings. This is Architecture, and today's topic will be Akai Mesa and Akai S3000 series of samplers. As many of you know, my favorite samplers to work with are the S3000 series samplers, and specifically the S3200XL, and alongside Akai Mesa. Now you would probably be wondering, why is it that I prefer these two machines out of the entire rack of samplers that I have here? Well, for starters, the S3200XL fully works with Akai Mesa on Windows 10 64-bit. It takes a little bit of um, finagling, some driver hacks, but otherwise it is a fully functioning program on Windows 10 64-bit, given the right SCSI adapter. Now I have with me the PowerBook G3, and the reason why I have this PowerBook is that it, it's via SCSI, will work with just about every sampler in this rack that won't work with Windows 32-bit or 64-bit. So this G, PowerBook G3 does cover a lot of ground for me. And this is what a typical Akai Mesa display looks like when it's fully functional. We have 43 programs or samples in memory, and we have about 13 K words of memory left, which I believe is about I've only used about 6.4 megabytes on this project, so I think by default that's about 16K. And as you can see, you have full parameter control of filter one, filter two. I strongly advise being careful when you're tweaking these things in a real-time setting, as you can kind of confuse it at moments. Like for example, I'll just kind of do that right now. Click on control center. Now you're hearing weird sounds and not sure what causes that, but going back to multi will more than likely fix that here. In the multi program you'll have my first break, my main pad, the 808 base, some roads that I recorded directly from my roads, a vinyl sample that I grabbed, some vocal samples from Splice, a think break, my go-to TR909 sample kit, and also a time-stretched version of the Think Break, chopped into one qu uh, quarter increments. And the reason I go with the one quarter increment chop instead of transient chops these days, is just easy to work with any other DAW and not have to import a MIDI file for it. You can just simply have a preset um, quarter inch chop uh, over the course of one or two bars. Very easy to work with. Didn't have to do any importing for this project here. And the other benefit of this machine, using it with the Kai Mesa, is the ability to save your programs to the machine itself. So say for example, I wanna save this bell pad right here. You can go to export program, Save samples with the program, click yes. And we'll just save this to the desktop. And this will be Bellpad DM9SP. Click save. And just like that, you have backed up one of your samples with its program data on your, in this case, 64 gigabyte SSD drive in this PowerBook G3. As many of you know, one of the limitations of the S3000 and 1000 series samplers is that you can only work with 510 megabytes per SCSI ID. With BESA, this is kind of one way you get around that and also have um, computer readable samples and program data for your S3000s or 1000s for that matter. So that's just a brief overview of this workflow. If you have any more questions and want me to do it a deeper dive on a different discussion on this, just let me know in the comments below. See ya.